So plants use changes in temperature and photoperiod to coordinate their life cycle with the changing of seasons. And Phil Wigg talked quite nicely about how um, both hypercotyle elongation and flowering time are regulated by temperature. But what I'm going to talk about in this talk is how seed dormancy is regulated by temperature. So um, dormancy levels are initiated during seed maturation, and this can be regulated by both temperature and photoperiod. And this is important um, because dormancy um, prevents germination if the conditions aren't favourable. And so um, then the dormancy is broken um, by after ripening or chilling or alternating temperatures. And then the non-dormant seed is then sensitive uh, to light and is able to germinate. So as I've said, we're interested in how temperature can regulate dormancy. So this just shows a typical experiment that we do in Arabidopsis. So we grow plants um, during the vegetative phase at a warm temperature, so in this case 20 degrees. And then when the plants start to flower, so at the first anthesis, we switch them um, to a different temperature. So here I'm showing data for when uh, plants were matured at 10, 15, 17, and 20. And you can see by lowering the temperature, this induces an incremental increase in dormancy levels. So we're measuring dormancy by the germination frequency, thereby if you've got high germination levels, uh, low dormancy, and vice versa. So you can see um, when you mature the seeds at 20, you get very low levels of dormancy, whereas when they're matured at 10, the dormancy is very high. And in fact, this, the cold stratification that usually you would use to break dormancy has little effect on breaking it when the low temperature has induced these really strong uh, dormancy levels. So ABA and GA are two important plant hormones that are involved in regulating dormancy. And it's the balance between these two hormones that's important. So we were interested to see whether um, maturing seeds at different temperatures has an effect on the ABA and GA levels. So you can see here for ABA, when you switch the maturation temperature from 22 to 15, that you get an increase in ABA levels in both Columbia and WS. And then if we look at GA4, you get a decrease in levels. So this, is, this goes along with the dormancy levels that we're seeing. So low ABA and high GA in non-dormant seeds and high ABA and low GA in dormant seeds. So this is suggesting that um, GA and ABA levels is temperature regulated in seeds. And we can show as well that this corresponds with changes in gene expression involved with hormone <coughs> metabolism. So this is a developmental time course. So we've got torpedo, walking stick, green cotyledon, and dry seed. And we use this way of doing this time course because obviously if you're growing maturing seeds at 22 and 15, then the actual developmental time is very different. So it's important to stage them. So you can see that you get an increase in ga 2 ox 6 expression in the seeds that have been matured at low temperature and also an increase in NCD4 expression. And in CYP707A2, we see the opposite effect where you get a decrease in expression. So this goes along with what we're seeing in that you've got higher ABA and lower GA levels in the low temperature matured seeds. And interestingly, we also see this increase in DOG1 expression in the dry seeds. And DOG1 is important for inducing and maintaining dormancy. So in vegetative tissues, there's two main mechanisms that are important for sensing low temperatures. Firstly, the expression of the CBF transcription factors that are part of this cold acclimation pathway. And you can see here there's three, so CBF3, 2, and 1. And they're involved in promoting the expression of the core genes that then leads to downstream effects and allows plants to survive to cold temperatures. And secondly, the chromatin reorganization of the FLC locus is important as well for um, low temperature signaling. But papers have shown that actually FLC does have a role in dormancy regulation, but this is only when the seeds are imbibed at low temperature, but 
So seeds are matured at low temperature but are also imbibed at low temperature, suggesting that independent mechanisms must also be important. So we were interested to see whether CBF-dependent pathways could also have a role in regulating dormancy in response to low temperature. So to investigate this, we matured seeds at three temperatures, so 20 degrees, 15 and 10 degrees. And you can see at 20, you get low levels of dormancy in all the lines tested. But when you shift the temperature to 15, so we get high dormancy levels in Columbia, but two CBF RNA lines and a mutant line show um, they're not able to enter these highly dormant states. So after three days cold stratification, you've got quite high levels of dormancy. But what's interesting is if you go on to reduce the temperature further, this strong phenotype that you see in the CBF mutants almost disappears. So this suggests that actually there must be CBF independent mechanisms that are regulating this as well. And we were also interested to see whether the CBFs are regulated by temperature like they are in vegetative tissues. So here, this shows CBF1 expression. And in the orange is the response in seedlings. So you can see after an hour at four degrees, you get this increase in expression. Whereas in the developing seeds, there seems to be kind of a fluctuating expression of CBF1, but it doesn't look like it's really increased by the low temperature. And then in the imbibed seeds, which is shown here at the bottom, there's no real increase in CBF1 expression at all. And this is actually quite interesting because, as I explained earlier, chilling is used to break dormancy in Arabidopsis. So you wouldn't really expect to have high CBF expression um, being promoted by low temperature when it's promoting germination. So this kind of inhibition of CBF expression in the imbibed seed could be quite important for the mechanism. So we continued our search for other components that make this cold acclimation pathway to see whether any of these could have a potential role in regulating the temperature um, regulation of dormancy. So the next thing we looked at was HOS1. So HOS1 is an E3 ligase, and it's important for targeting ICE1 for ubiquitination. So HOS1 uh, mutant plants flower early, and this is interesting since um, circadian clock mutants, which also have early flowering or other flowering phenotypes, also have been shown to have roles in dormancy regulation. So this makes it an interesting candidate to um, explore whether it does have a role in the temperature regulation of dormancy. So when we mature um, HOS1 mutants in the Columbia background at 20 and 15, you can see that in both cases, the seeds are completely non-dormant. So you, don't, you can't induce high levels of dormancy by moving to low temperature. So then we wanted to know, well, is this actually a temp temperature-dependent mechanism that Hoss is involved in, or is it more the fact that Hoss 1 seeds just simply cannot be dormant? So then we looked in the uh, Hoss 1-1 mutant, which is in the C24 background. So at warm temperatures, C24 is actually highly dormant. So you can see that you need the cold stratification to break the dormancy. But again, we see that the HOS1 mutant is completely non-dormant. So this is actually suggesting that HOS1 is part of a more general mechanism regulating dormancy and that it's not temperature uh, specific. So we wanted to understand whether HOS is having this effect through a maternal pathway. And so to do this, we made crosses between Columbia and HOS1. <laughs> And you can see when you cross Columbia to Hoss, the germination is definitely higher than when you cross um, Hoss to Columbia. So this suggests that the mechanism that Hoss is acting through is a, through a maternal pathway. So when we looked at um, the dormancy levels in overexpressing Hoss 1 seeds, which is in the Hoss 1 mutant background, again, like I've shown for a number of the lines, the dormancy levels are very low at 20 degrees. And then when you shift uh, to 15, so you've got no dormancy in HOS1, but you can induce high levels of dormancy um, in Columbia. So the overexpressing lines appear to have an intermediate phenotype, 
So it doesn't look like by overexpressing HOS in the HOS1 mutant background that you're getting a full complementation of the dormancy phenotype. So as I mentioned earlier, ABA and GA are two important hormones in regulating dormancy. So we were interested to see whether the low dormancy phenotype that we see in HOS is due to alterations in sensitivity or synthesis of ABA or GA. So these um, figures here show germination in response to increasing concentrations of PAC and ABA. So PAC is a GA biosynthesis inhibitor. And you can see in general here that none of the three HOS1 mutant alleles tested have a particularly more or less sensitive phenotype, suggesting that it's not a defect in GA signaling that's important um, for the phenotype. And also, in general, we see no real difference in ABA response either, so suggesting that um, it's not ABA signaling either that's important. So we then looked at um, gene expression of FT and constants, the two flowering time regulators, and also MFT, which has been shown to have a role in germination. So if we look at FT, you can see that when you um, reduce the maturation temperature of the seeds, you get an increase in FT expression. But this seems to be completely gone in the HOS1 mutant. So the levels are even lower than what you observe um, when the wild type is matured at 20. And we see a similar response for MFT, whereby you've got more expression in the cold matured seeds, but you don't get this induction in the HOS1 seeds. But then conversely, when we look at constants expression, it seems that you've got more constants expression in HOS1 seeds than you do in the wild type. So this is kind of just starting to build a mechanism by which HOS1 might be acting, but obviously at this stage it's still quite preliminary. So I'd just like to summarise. So low temperature during seed maturation promotes high dormancy levels. The temperature regulation of dormancy is coupled with alterations to ABA and GA metabolism. And expression of the CBFs are required for high dormancy levels in response to low temperature, but it doesn't appear that CBFs themselves are actually temperature regulated in seeds. So dormancy cannot be induced um, in HOS1s, and this is irrespective of the temperature that you mature the seeds at. So it seems that HOS1 is defining a new, novel, essential maternal pathway that controls seed dormancy, which is independent of GA and ABA responses in the mature seed. And it seems that the expression of MFT and FT may be important for determining the dormancy levels. So I'd just like to finish by acknowledging the people that have contributed to this work. Thank you. Good. Um, thank you very much. Very nice talk, Sarah. Um, if I understood correctly, the effect of the, the, the importance of CBFs in, uh, in dormancy is greater at 15 than it is at 10. And isn't that really the opposite of what you might expect given um, its role in cold acclimation? You'd expect, for instance, expression and potency of CBF to be greater at 10 than 15. I was wondering if you'd, you'd had thoughts about that. I think... I wouldn't say it was necessarily surprising that we didn't see a stronger phenotype at 10, but I think what it represents is that at 15, you can induce high dormancy levels, but for example, if you start to extend the cold stratification, then it does become almost sensitive to that, and you can start to break the dormancy. Whereas when you mature seeds at 10 degrees, the dormancy is so strong that you really cannot break it. So I think... The, temp the difference in temperature, I think, is actually representing two different mechanisms. And maybe it is surprising that the CBFs aren't involved at the lower temperature, but I think it kind of is clearly suggesting that other things are involved in this really strong dormancy induction.